Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm I I'm well aware of the fact that <laughs> that this video is five months overdue. <laughs> um, but I kind of just had to take a break from a large portion of Second Life. Um, predominantly due to the fact that you know people were being horrid again, like they always are, because a lot of Second Life people are pigs, and that's just an objective fact. Um, and also the fact that a lot of event owners were being, like, nasty to me. So I was just getting the ick, kind of. <laughs> um, so I've mostly been focusing on stuff outside of Second Life. Anyway, so, as per the title, in today's video, I'm going to be discussing part two of my, uh, HD Lelutka Lips tutorial which is actually scripting your HUD in world and, you know, making it ready for the consumer. So to get things started off, I've rezzed a prim here, just a, you know, a regular box prim, and I've sized it to the size of my HUD, which I've uploaded. Um, if your HUD is multi-face, you know, I then it'll be a different size. I might make a tutorial on multi-face HUDs at some point, um, but for now, you know, this isn't Bosch, this is purely Lilutka uh, and their scripts, which I have open here in the Creator Kit Lilutka 3.1. So again, you're just going to slap on your texture by right-clicking and edit and then select face, switch over to the texture tab and applying it here. Now, because mine has these little holes that are transparent, I have mine set to alpha blending. If yours stretches the full extent of the texture, then I guess set it to none or masking or what have you. Um, and as for my actual HUDs, I've created two versions of the lips. One is just the regular lips, like I showed you in the previous tutorial. And then in one, I painted on a little tongue, uh, which I thought was quite cute, you know. Um, and I've done a limited palette because <laughs> whilst I enjoy playing around, with multicolored lips and stuff like that, most people don't actually wear them. So in my experience, they don't actually sell that well unless it's Halloween, which, you know, unfortunately it is right now because I took five months, <laughs> which I'm, I am sorry for, you know, you guys didn't deserve that, but unfortunately I just needed the break. Um, but anyway, so to start things off, I'm going to zoom in on the HUD and you might notice that Aside from the actual product swatch images down here, I also have these up here. Now, both Bosch, Pixel, and uh, Lelutka's scripts all allow you to include your own URLs to your website, to your Flickr, to your marketplace, you know, whatever. And so I'm also going to be showing you how to do that. Now, the one thing I'm not including in this is the minimize script because I just don't use it. I don't have a button for that. You know, I mean, my mentality is if you're too lazy to right click detach, then I can't help you. <laughs> so anyway, to start things off, I'm going to create prims to cover each of these images and each of these texts. And then I will walk you through how to set up the scripts. So to start off, I'm just going to right click on it so that, or just, you know, right click wherever and select create. And by default, it's on the square prim and I'm just going to click on it. And then I'm making sure that stretch both sides isn't on because I don't need it to be. And then pressing control and shift, I'm just going to scale down this prim to the size of what I'm covering. In this case, the flicker button. Here we go. And I will make this transparent later, but whilst I'm scaling it, I like having it opaque just so that I can make sure it's completely covering everything. There we go. And the depth doesn't matter when it's a HUD attachable because um, it's going to show up as flat anyway. Um, but I just like to make them compact just so that it's, you know, less in your face. Um, and then pressing shift, I'm going to drag on this arrow to duplicate this. And I'll just drag one for down here as well. 
and then I'll shift click both of these and shift duplicate these across here. And now I can scale this up to cover this and scale these. And there we go. And now I will do the same for these product images. You just wanted to cover the whole thing, literally just from edge to edge, so that it's as easy as possible for the customer to click on whatever swatch it is that they're wanting to use. And then I'm just going to duplicate this down and duplicate across and duplicate across. There we go. And now I have to link everything together. And when you're doing this, you need to make sure that your background item, which is what you're going to be dragging the scripts into, is your root prim. So you have to select that last. So I'm going to start by selecting these swatches here. I'm just shift clicking through all of them. And then I'm actually coming down here to transparency and I'm just going to set it to 30% transparent just so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to finally shift click the back and link. And now would be a good time to set up your general, uh, under your general tab, your name of your item and the permissions. Now in my case, this isn't for a gacha or a, a Mipon or whatever it's called now. It's just a regular item. So I'm just going to set it to copy. Um, you don't need to set it to modify, really, because I don't know, what are, what are people going to do to modify a HUD, you know? <laughs> um, if you want people to be able to resize your HUD, like if you make them quite big and, I don't know, someone wants a really tiny one, then I suppose turn on modify, but I tend to try and keep mine at sort of a, a medium size, I guess, you know? Um, so for this collection, I'm just going to name it Loretta Mako Lips, and this is the regular HUD without the teeth. So I'm just going to call it Muckolips regular HUD, enter, and there we go. So first of all, before I actually do any of the scripting, I'm going to rename all my linked prims because it's just going to make it easier for the actual scripts to know what they're doing and you're not going to have to go in after adding the scripts to do it. So I'm going to start off with the buttons down here. Now these you can basically name whatever you want. So I'm just going to edit linked and shift click to select all of these. And then here where it says multiple selection under name, I'm just going to highlight that and call them button. It doesn't really matter. If you had a big enough HUD, I would suggest naming them after the swatch, just so that when you click on it, you know what you're doing. Um, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. Now for these buttons up here, because they are URLs and they redirect outside of Second Life, they need to have a specific name. And what they need to be called is a lowercase URL. And the reason for this is because the script that we're going to drop into the root prim reads the name of the item. And if it's flagged URL, then it knows, oh, this is a button that redirects them outside of Second Life. I need to check the description. And that's exactly what we're going to do now, is we're going to put the URLs for each of these buttons into the descriptions. So for my Flickr, it's https www.flickr.com slash Waretta. For Instagram, And then I'm actually just going to copy that because it's the same for the rest, just this is different. <laughs> and there we go. So it's as simple as that. And now that we're done with that, we can actually start playing around with the script. So to set this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click again, the root prim and go to edit, content, and then what we need to do is this apply a builder and apply a main. We need to select both by control selecting both of them. And I'm just going to drag both of them into the contents tab. And you'll see that this menu has popped up. Now, depending on what applier type you're creating, you might want to select Evo or Evo X. In this case, we're doing Evo X, which funnily enough is back compatible. So if you make something for Evo X, it'll also work for Evo. So I'm just going to select Evo X. 
and you'll see everything has gone yellow. That's a linked prim. And this means that it's working. And again, here in the nearby chat, it'll also say apply or initializing. And then it says click on a button to configure it. Now, you don't actually need to click on these up here because these are essentially done because I pasted in the links and I named them URL. But these we can now, you know, work on with the swatches. So I'm just going to open up my swatches panel uh, folder. And here I have my different swatches. Now, I have forgotten <laughs> which order I put them in the HUD because I mess around in Photoshop and ordered them by darkness. So if I just select linked and deselect the root and make everything transparent, um, you'll see that it goes from like the deepest color to the most nude color, I suppose, um, which of course doesn't line up with the names. <laughs> so don't be like me and probably just name them one, two, three, etc. Um, but yes, I'm just going to check the names quickly and I'll be right back. Okay, I've checked the order and this is the order from left to right, <laughs> top to bottom. So to get things started, I'm just going to click on the first one and you'll see this menu will pop up. Now we're interested in HD lips, so we're going to click on HD lips. And then again, like I mentioned in my previous video, we're interested in diffuse, which is just the base texture. If you have, you know, a matching shine for your lips, then you can add that. Although most customers in my experience don't really care for that. They have their own setup. Um, so I'm just going to select diffuse and then you'll see insert diffuse map UUID. So I'm going to ch check my list, it's red. So I'm going to come down here to plain underscore red, right click it, Copy asset UUID, right click, paste, and submit. And then you'll see that this has changed. And that means that basically just that there's a thing there now. <laughs> so you can press done and it'll turn green. And now to test it, let me just adjust my view quickly. There we go. I'm going to click it again and click test. And you'll see it's applied to my avatar. And then again, to set up another swatch, I'm going to click the next one, HD lips, diffuse. I need swatch rows. So I'm going to right click rows, copy asset UUID, right click in the little text box, paste, submit, done to confirm. And then if you want to test, because you're paranoid like me, and you're going to click it and select test. Now, if you accidentally were to copy the wrong UUID and you notice that, then what you can do is you can always click the uh, button again during this testing phase and click reconfigure. Alternatively, if you only notice it once you're done with the HUD, um, so at the end, once you're done with everything, you can click on the base prim and then select finished. Now, if you were to do that, I mean, mine won't let me because I have unassigned buttons, but if you did, then basically what you would just have to do is you would have to go into the contents tab again and just drag this builder script back in and it'll allow you to reconfigure as needed. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to script this, and then I'm going to show you duplicating the HUD to create another one. Okay, so I've finished this HUD, and of course the buttons have made themselves untransparent again. So I'll just set the transparency of everything. There we go. And now, as you can see, it looks like a regular HUD. And now if we click these buttons, you'll see that they actually work. There we go, I'm just checking all of them. Yes, yes, okay. So now I'm just going to check I forgot to check one of these buttons, so I'll just check it now. There we go. And as I was saying before, if let's say I had accidentally put the wrong UID in that, what I could do is I could right click edit, go to the contents tab, and you'll see that the builder script self deletes. 
And it does this so that if you need to reconfigure it, you can just drag that builder script back in and then the main script will know, oh, I'm in edit mode. And so it'll let you reconfigure stuff. So I'm just going to do that right now. I'm going to redrag in this builder script. Again, select Evo X. And you'll see that they've come up with this little menu thing again, so you know that you're in edit mode. So now, again, I could click that and reconfigure. Of course, I don't need to, but um, yes, I just thought I'd show you guys that. There we go. So I'm now going to duplicate this HUD because I need to do the teeth version. So I'm just going to drag that one down. And here I'm going to rename it Teeth HUD. And I'm just going to select face and change the texture to the teeth version. And now, again, I can go into Edit, Contents, and drag in the Builder script, because now I have to change the UUIDs. Oh my god, I called it teeth instead of tongue. <laughs> I have to fix that. Oh my god, I am off my game today. Okay. Sorry, the issue is fixed. <laughs> so now I'm again going to edit linked, deselect the root prim, change everything to transparent so I can see what I'm doing. And again, I'm going to go through, click the first one, HD lips, diffuse. This is red. Right click, copy asset UUID, control V, submit, done. And I'm just going to test this quickly. Yes. Okay. So I'm now going to go through and do the rest, and then I'll show you how to set these up so that they attach to your screen. Okay, as you guys can see, I'm just finishing up this HUD. There we go. And I'm just going to make sure that it's named properly, not teeth. Tongue. <laughs> there we go. I'm actually also going to add in brackets LEL EVO X, because that can be helpful for the customer if they're looking for something in their inventory. There we go. And now, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to close this and close that and close that. And I'm going to go into my reasons because when I right click and take the object, it'll show up here. So right click, take, and now I can move them with control X and oh, control V into the folder I want them in. And now I can zoom in. And we're going to test the huts. So to attach them to where we want them, which is on the screen, I'm going to right click, attach to HUD, and I select center. You can select center two as well. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yes, as you can see, this is now in place. If yours shows up the wrong way round, like this, for example, or like that, then that just has to do with the orientation of your land that you're working on. Um, so you can just, you know, rotate it and it should be fine. <laughs> um, it's not that big of an issue. So I'm actually just going to attach both of them quickly. Um, and it will remember where you want them to attach once you've set this up once. So now if I detach this and I double click and turn it on again, you'll see that it's um, attached back in the same place. So now I'm just going to go through and check the swatches. Yes, they all seem to be applying fine. Um, so yes, thankfully this is a much shorter tutorial this time around. Um, and that's basically it. When you're packaging them up, just make sure that you right click and check the properties inside your um, inventory folder because 
It could be that modify is turned off, in which case you're going to have to turn modify back on, turn transfer off, or vice versa. Um, just because the scripts inside basically dictate the permissions of the prim that they're in. So you might want to check the permissions of the scripts before putting them into your item. Uh, but yes, again, I'm sorry that it took me so long to bring this part of the tutorial out. Um, I will try and upload more regularly in the coming months, especially seeing as I hit a thousand followers. So clearly you guys want more videos. Um, I'm actually going to try and shift my focus more into the sort of tutorial realm of Second Life rather than the commercial main store realm, because I'll be honest with you, participating in events is an absolute hassle and an absolute trauma. And I'm quite happy to put that on the back burner for now and, you know, pursue other avenues. So as far as doing other tutorials and stuff goes, if you guys want more, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have specific ideas, then please feel free to make recommendations. I'm very open to them. Uh, and yes, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.